this week's episode of We Are The Bonsai Supply. I am Jerome and today we're gonna work on this adenium right here. So this adenium did not look like this um, when I first started working on it. You can see that all of these flat cuts right here, these used to be very long stops. So this tree, when I first started working on it, it was probably about this tall. And then I did the initial cutting where I just cut the stalks back and then I let the tree grow uncontrollably for about two years until I had these long branches here. And now I can go back in here and do its very first styling. I also think that this tree needs a, a different pot, so I'm definitely gonna repot it into something much bigger. Now at this time of the year, it is a really good time to actually uh, wire and work your adeniums. Um, the reason why it's a really good time to wire your adeniums is because right now, uh, most of them are asleep. So when they're asleep, the branches become very soft and you can put a lot more movement into the branches a lot easier. Um, and the branches also set a lot faster because now that the tree is asleep, I wire it, I can put some crazy bends and movements into the branches. Once the tree wakes up and starts to grow, um, these branches here will then start to set a lot faster. Um, once I go ahead and repot it, uh, what I'm trying to achieve is I want to have a root spread that spreads a little more. So I'm going to do this uh, technique where you cut the base off, the non-interesting part, and then you let the uh, roots from here come out and then you let those thicken. So this tree needs to go into a, uh, uh, a lot larger pot for these roots to be able to spread. I think I'm also going to change the front. Right now, um, this branch hits you in the face and I would have to cut it off if I kept this in the front. And the tree kind of looks very flat at this angle right here. So I think I'm going to have it part of something a little more like along these lines. And maybe some of these branches might have to go. But in here, when I change it, it creates depth. So you have this. Now the widest part of the tree is at a slight angle. This is in the back now it's giving us depth. So all I'm going to do to this tree today is I'm going to uh, defoliate the tree. I'm just going to pluck off all of these leaves here. Uh, I'm going to then wire the entire tree and shape it. And then I'm going to do the uh, root work to repot the tree. Okay? So, so let's get to it. on how I wire my tricks so let me take you in a little closer so I can explain you how I like to wire my tricks um, the number one rule for me when I apply the wire I like to apply it as neatly as possible so I don't like to have any crossing wires um, I don't like to have any space in between the wires I like to have them very neatly applied so that it almost it almost looks like that the wire is not really there or that it doesn't bother the eye uh, to the viewer when you look at the tree it doesn't really bother your eye um, it's really bad when the wire really stands out and all you can see is the wire so therefore I like to apply it very neatly so now let me show you how I do so I'm gonna go ahead and wire this branch and this branch together okay now I always like to wire two branches together and the reason is that you get a really good anchoring point when you wire two branches together. So what you don't see is that over here I have another branch. Now this branch comes out of the same area as these two branches. Uh, this branch, these two branches I'm going to probably wire them something like this and then this one might go over the top. Not quite sure yet but I do know that I have to wire all three branches. So what I can do is I can, since this branch is a little thicker than this one, I can apply a thick wire, wire these two together, and then I can take another wire and wire these two together. And then therefore, I can wire this thicker branch as well, and I don't have to switch to a thicker wire, I just double up on this one. And so what I do next is I take a, a pretty thick wire, and I leave a little slack in between the wire and the branch, 
and then I press the wire against the branch to see if the wire moves the branch. You see how easily it moves? So this means that this wire is thick enough to wire this branch. And then over here, I get a little more resistance, so that means if I double up, I can wire this branch as well. Perfect. And then I like to uh, bend my wire in half like this, and then I like to come from the back, like this. And then so now this wire goes into this direction. And then this wire goes into this direction. So at the very tip of the branch, I always like to use my wire cutter or a pair of pliers to apply the wire and to bend it. At the end, you always want to bend the uh, wire down a little bit so that the uh, branch does not, does not fall or slip out of the wire. So notice how I did like two uh, coils into this direction and then I stopped and I continued here and I'm going to go back to the first branch. And so when I wire, I use um, this one hand which is my uh, leading hand and this is my following hand. So as this hand wires, this one follows and presses the uh, wire against the branch. So see here again, I'm gonna use this and I'm just gonna tie it down like that. Here we go, now this is very tight. And now the branch will not slip out. Here we are. So now I'm gonna do the exact same thing again, but I'm gonna wire these two branches together. So, if you look at it from this side, you see how this here, it is very neatly laid on top of each other, and it looks very nice, doesn't it? So, since I think that this is going to be my front, I'm going to use, I can start to wire this already, and I think I'm going to put a lot of uh, crazy movement into these branches. So now, when you, um, start to style your branches something that's really important so the first branch goes out and then in and then out and then in right so the second branch on top I styled it the wrong way I went against each other so what you want to do is you want the second branch to follow the first branch so we go out here a little bit first right like this here now I mimicked this bend and this bend and now it goes in, and then it goes back out. So, if you don't follow the first branch, uh, at the end it just looks really odd. Um, when you when you uh, when you finish wiring your entire tree, it looks really odd. So, it looks a lot better when you follow in, along the same lines. So now this one, I'm going to put in over the top, as which is going to be a filler for the second layer of the branch. Go ahead and uh, wire the entire uh, tree and if I find a couple problem branches I'm going to stop and I'm going to show you what I would do with those uh, problem branches. So let me go ahead. One thing that I didn't mention before is that uh, which way should you go with the wire. So since these two branches, since I want to bring them both down, I'm going to have to apply the wire from underneath. When I go from underneath and I pull the branches down, so that means I'm going to wire from the bottom over the top like this. Like, like such uh, or like so so when I go over the top like this the tension is going to be here so therefore the uh, anchoring point is going to be much stronger versus if I came from the top down if I want to bring the branches up I would start from the top down so always the opposite side I want to bring them down I'm going to start from the bottom I want to bring them up I'm going to start from the top okay so you see how this branch here is alone. I mean, I could technically wire it together with this one, but since I had to double this thick one up, uh, I use this one and this one and this one and this back one together. 
So I'm gonna have, I can do this one by itself as well. So I just take a longer wire than I would normally would. There it is. And I will start from the back. Like this. And now I'm gonna use the anchoring point still in the back. And I'm gonna go around with the first wire like this. Here we are. And then the second one, I'm just gonna follow the first one. So I'm gonna double up on this wire here. It has an amazing hold like that as well. wiring the uh, entire tree and I already shaped the tree which uh, usually you shape the tree once you pop the tree but since I have a pretty good idea of where I'm gonna go with this tree I already went ahead and uh, wired the tree now I, um, I put a lot of movement into the tree more than I usually would with a uh, trunk that's this straight um, the reason why I put this much movement into the branches is because I want this tree to look like a, uh, a, a baobab, you know how they look, how they have this really big base and then these crazy branches on top and a very tight um, canopy. And that's exactly what it's trying to go for. I want to make it look uh, very tight and very gnarly, which makes the tree look even a lot older. Um, now one thing that I didn't mention before is that when you, before you wire a desert rose, you want to make sure that you let it dry out. So meaning you're not going to water it for like a week so that it becomes completely dry and then you can go ahead and put a lot of crazy vents into this. but it looks like I might be okay so these roots actually here once I started repotting I saw that they start to naturally already grow away from the trunk so I actually don't have to cut the tree at this point anymore now I can just position it in the pot and then tie it down and it actually looks pretty good and let me get a little more soil here Now I can just use the soil and uh, prop up the roots. So a couple things that I did here. Um, I used the uh, soil uh, to put underneath these roots to prop them up. Now I did not water the tree just yet. Um, since I just repotted it, I want to wait a few days um, before I go ahead and water it. So usually the procedure is when you repot a tree that I mean a desert rose only, and this is only applies to desert roses. That after you uh, take them out of the uh, old pot, you wash off all the roots. You usually want to dry the roots in the shade for a couple days until the roots are completely dry before. Now keep in mind that this was the very first styling of this sedanium, uh, the very first time it had any wire applied. So it does look a little heavy on the wire, but the next styling I can focus on bringing more branches into the, uh, 
into the inside of the uh, canopy. Uh, I don't want the canopy to be any bigger than this. Um, I want to keep it this size, definitely. I just want the root structure to become a little more uh, noticeable. Um, the pot that I chose uh, actually just came off of our newest shipment, which has just arrived a couple of days ago. You can actually still see the container in the background. That's how new it is. Now, all the pottery that has arrived is uh, completely new. We have all new glazes, new shapes, and we have some very sexy and very cool glazes on there. Um, now, they are live and they are available on the website right now. Uh, one of my favorite new pots uh, has to be the uh, Atomic Tangerine. Uh, this orange pot is one of the newest pots that we have on the website and it's just super super cool. I've never seen an orange pot before so I do encourage you to go check it out and uh, I'll catch you guys next time.